This is Zach and Jay, YouTube sensations, and this is 1,000 pounds of real cash. So get your hands ready because. Here we go. Hey, give me this. Fucking go for it, yeah? And they tell us that they plan to hand out a thousand pounds in cash. Tom, they're absolutely flying through the water over the wedge. I'm not worried about embarrassing myself. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Rich Uncle Pennybags. And I too am Rich Uncle Pennybags. And we are at the Red Bull Soapbox 2019. For those of you that don't know, this is a very steep hill with as many death traps as Red Bull could come up with. Teams spend months building robust creative mobiles to get them from top to bottom and very few make it. Sorry Zach, continue. <laughs> Meanwhile, we are literally in something that took my dad three days to make in his shed. But we know it is not about the experience and it is not about the expertise, it is about the show. Which is why we have brought a thousand pounds cash that quite frankly we cannot afford to lose. We're not going to dash it into the Re crowd. Real, real cash. Yeah. We spoke about this, mate. We weren't. It's real cash. What? We need to talk about these things. The second show. So, how did we get to the point where we were dressed up as two Monopoly men on a giant silver Monopoly piece? Well, let's rewind back to three weeks before the event where us two idiots with no engineering experience managed to pull off the most talked about run of the bloody day. As we said, we were drastically lacking on the time, the knowledge and the tools to make this soapbox happen. So, with that in mind, we got cracking on building the absolute dream team that could make this happen. That's all the information on it right there. This is Steve-O, our chief engineer. Skills, 30 years in the engineering game. Relationship to the show, Zach's dead. And this is the first brainstorming session that they had Three weeks before showtime. Jesus, their last minute. Come on, oh! <laughs> oh, slap in the tarmac. Whoa. Whoa. Those twitchy front wheels. <laughs> oh. oh! He jumped off. 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 Whoa. Oh! If you help me, you don't want to be touching brakes, you can help it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's got to be a last resort to touch brakes. <laughs> Just don't touch the brakes, it's all technique. <laughs> <laughs> if we were fatter, no. would we go quicker? Yeah, no. Mm. Well, do you reckon we should wear weighted vests? <laughs> <sighs> You've just got to go there and enjoy it, haven't you? I quite like the idea though of having Jamie stood in the back. Yeah, I do. So from that we established that Jamie would be stood in the back like a chariot. Touching the brakes is probably the worst thing you can do. A weighted vest is a no-go and if you've got twitchy front steering then the passenger would jump out the back. We left Steve to crack on with the frame while we hired an expert designer that could find us a theme that would cause a scene. This is Dan. Skills, turning up hungover to important meetings and a design degree from a shit uni. Relationship to the show, mate. Actually, I can't believe it. I can describe <laughs> Got it. Jamie and then me inside the pig's head. That'll be at the front. Now it's not looking like a money box. Do you, I, like I, money box pigs are really fat. And round, and, that, and that's round. half, so... You, yeah, no, that's a half. I, I do like the idea of you two riding a pig. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up from a slumber. I've got an idea! <laughs> right, I actually have an idea. In Monopoly, you collect 200 people when you pass go. Yeah. I'm dressed in the Monopoly Man outfit. <laughs> Both get out, collect 200 quid, and then go back and go. <laughs> 
That, that would be funny. Imagine if you had a giant pass go sign and then we fucking jumped through it to start the performance. You gave us some fat water cash. Yeah, yeah, I'm keen for that. I like that idea. I, I come up with the best ideas and then hung over. I'm, I'm the most use I'm ever going to be. <laughs> Maybe not in physical labour or in effort, but ideas on fire and fire. So at that point, we had decided the best way to score highly and cause a scene was to be men of the people and throw a thousand pounds of our hard earned cash into the crowd. It was a risky and it was an expensive manoeuvre, but a manoeuvre we were willing to do to win that People's Choice Awards on the day and hopefully make the TV broadcast to get that sweet, sweet exposure to two million people. <laughs> Here's what's also concerning. Come next week, I'm in Paris, then I've got three days till Glastonbury, then after Glastonbury, we got soapbox. <laughs> The question you need to be asking is how long after Glastonbury Glass Glastonbury Glastonbury are we actually gonna be capable of functioning? So we probably have like five working days to be able to make something. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we so fucking do this? <laughs> In that exact moment Dan had fluffed it. It was way in over his head and he wasn't the design manager we were after. So with literally no time to build it, we pied it off to his mate who said he could do it. And we trusted him. <laughs> we didn't even know if he could do it and we trusted him. Didn't even know the guy. Anyway, the theme was Money Talks and we were gonna razz it down that Red Bull Hill on a silver Monopoly piece. But we still needed someone to coordinate the dance. And I knew just the guy. And then we'll just get it out and start dashing it, mate. It'll be scenes. I'm not racing with you. No, no, you're not racing with us, you're fucking off after you do your dance and just cheering us on and shit. No, he's running down the track. Oh, you're running down the track. And dashing out the rest of the money. And dashing out the rest of the dough. Yeah, you're fucking, that's true. <laughs> now this man on the phone is Kyle. His skills, professional actor. Once smoked a cig outside a cafe on Corrie. I don't know, you're not making this up. Relationship to the show, Jamie's mate. Kyle would make sure the boys' performance to 30,000 people on race day was looking tip top. If it's not, why not be naked? So with the perfect team constructed, we had all bases covered. It was time to check up on Steve-O on day one of building the frame. Just so in a minute, go on, give the people an update, Steve. How confident are you feeling? Not very. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the biggest problem is at the minute? Just time. Well, I'm going to spend today and tomorrow on it. I'll know where I am then. I don't know, I'll be able to tell you by tomorrow afternoon probably. So with Steve one day into the build and not feeling confident, we are kind of hoping on a prayer. We needed the frame done in three days to pass over to the design team to bring it to life. And although things were looking bad on the surface, Steve's a stand-up sort of guy. So I knew deep down it'd get done. Oh. Right, so what's the update today? Finished. Well, apart from the steering. <laughs> And I was just asking you what the weakest part is, what was your answer? All the welds, every single weld. <laughs> so where the 100 bars go in, where it touches yeah. to the frame. So with day two of the build coming to an end and the cart 95% done, Steve had pulled it out of the bag and all that needed doing now was the steering, which gave us enough time for literally two test rides before giving it to the design team. Is that too much? Is that all right? Right, first proper test run with someone in the back. The first one was really twitchy. <laughs> oh my god! Not too, not too twitchy. <laughs> oh, I got a break. Yeah, break. That was really twitchy. Yeah, I know. Okay. So with two test runs, I had realised Steve had made the twitchiest steering known to man. It was too late to change anything now. We needed to pass it over to the design team. The beauty. Seven days inside a workshop. Dan's mate had been hard at work crafting the best giant Monopoly hat piece he could. It was beautiful. The meticulous design and obsession with the art form was evident. Rumour has it he played Monopoly games against himself in the mirror in preparation and the end result was a giant Monopoly piece which would enclose Jay and I as we rattled down a steep hill in our homemade death trap. So whilst the men discussed the technical stuff and I stood there with my hands down my boxes pretending to understand, the last minuteness of this entire operation came to light as we packed the still wet paper mache hat into the van ready for London. Oh. 
So we arrived in London the day before the race, ready for the MOT. Other teams had incredible setups, obviously having spent months crafting the perfect machine. Meanwhile, in the Zach and Jay show camp, a whole new set of issues had come to light. Cool. That's tight. Why did you make it that tight? Oh, that one snapped up there. So the plan, I think, was to have me here squatting and holding on, but as you can see by my right leg, which is curving in this way, I don't fit. <laughs> so I'm like this at the moment. And I'm meant to be there on that seat. I think we might have to cut this whole thing back, you know. Don't, no, no, oh, no, no, Jamie, that's not do attached. That. Don't do that, don't do that. Sorry. This is completely separate, by the way. We need to attach that today. Oh, Jamie, you put the fucking frame through. Sorry. Well, so what's happened is the hat has gone hard in the van and these side bits have stuck up like that, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but the front was up so high that it was ruining my only, my only little viewing hole. Um, so yeah, we got the water bottles which uh, weighing it down a little bit, it made it wet again. Um, Jamie's got no room in the back, so we're gonna have to figure that out. And it's less than a day before the race. But Jamie can't really be like that, because he's gonna get all his weight thrown forward. Yeah, this is gonna be painful. <laughs> but you are gonna suffer for two minutes. You've gotta be prepared to give a bit for Queen and Country. And how would we space it up though? Well, we can think of that. We've got wood. Take a, a round piece of bar we've got, pole we've got, and go from the centre all the way up through to the top of where all those bars are going. Pull tight through here, pull tight, pull tight, so this isn't moving from that. This will support some of the weight. And I think but what we've got to start thinking is how much time have we got? We've got two hours, two so hours, we, need to get, two hours go like we need to get shifted. With only two hours to completely refix the hat to give Jamie room and paint the entire frame so it didn't look awful, this was going to be close. But when the going gets tough, the tough get going as we put the final touches on the cart before race day. How you doing, Dan? Dan? <laughs> <laughs> My lungs are silver. No friends were harmed in the making of this film. I'm pretty sure this can actually says it's good for your lungs. <laughs> oh, we also realised at this point we painted the rims and tyres with spray paint, which meant we now had no brakes or grip on the tyres. Absolute amateurs. With race day finally here, the crowds gathered in the thousands to Ali Pali, all wanting to see one thing, carnage. How are you feeling, Dan? I'm good, I'm ready to watch you fucking die. What's that? You don't think we're going to win? <laughs> sure. Welcome to the death trap. It's what I'm going to be remembered for. I'm going to be like this. <laughs> See, I'm so worried about dying that I'm not worried about embarrassing myself. Our team was a bit of a shambles. Jamie feared death and I couldn't wear a mouth guard without nearly being sick. But there was a more pressing issue at hand. We needed to analyse the competition to give us the best chance in nailing our run. The obvious concerns about the twitchy steering were realer than ever. Many before us had crashed and burned and I knew I was going to have to wrestle with it to the bitter end. This was a go big or go home scenario. Our goal was to get on the TV broadcast and bring home the People's Choice Award. We weren't here to play games. Well, don't worry about getting down because that's the end of our dance. Yeah, then it's not hard to go off and then you want to get up. Right, okay. Like, let's go, let's go, let's go. This will be sick, this will be sick. Right, one more bump for me. I'm going to spend a grand in 20 seconds. Yeah, so dumb. So we're divvying this up. And this is £1,000 real cash. Thank you, guys. That one that we are going to do. Fucking shampoo! Pick it up! Because he's doing a performance, Dan. It's not a real financial transaction, mate. Oh, this is getting really fun. I don't, I don't, I'm just, I, I like that you look back at the performance. Look, let's do what we're doing. You put half in mine, put half in yours, swap and go. Yeah, yeah. Simple as, just yeah. 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 With all the time for practice gone and our routine looking pretty shambolic, it was our time to grace the stage. We were excited to buy our way into the people's hearts with a thousand smackaroonies. The plan was simple, but at the end of the day, money talks. <laughs> I 
I didn't want it on camera, but a little bit of pee came out, and now I've got a little bit of pee in my boxes. I'm 100% that shit's gonna fuck up. <laughs> if you ain't talking about it, take your ask her. Here we go. The moment of truth when the bodies become men. It's T minus five minutes for me and Jay to throw ourselves down that hill. Shitting myself. I was absolutely fine before, and now we're about to do it, and I'm shitting myself. That's fine, we'll fuck it. Let's go for it. Yo, I'm actually yeah. shitting myself. I'll take it, get your Ladies and gentlemen, can we have some noise? Yeah. Can we have some noise? So our time to shine had come. This Millie Rock was for all the competitors who had fallen before us. The pressure was on and there was only one thing left to do. Lads, fucking go for it, yeah? Yeah, like, fucking come on, man. Go for it. Well, the course is now clear. Okay, guys, if you make some noise. Uh, this is the Zach and Jay show. It's the, the Zach, Zach and Jay show. Big cheers from the crowd. We've got some support. All right, then. Do not let your supporters down. Do not let them down. Go on, Zach and Jay. Let's see it. This is Zach and Jay, YouTube sensations, and this is 1,000 pounds of real cash. So get your hands ready because. Come to money! Here we go! Today's a Monopoly based theme. They said they've got no DIY skills whatsoever, so they decided to throw money at the design. And they tell us that they plan to hand out 1,000 pounds in cash. This is real money! Real Let's see what the Zach and Jay show can do. The people's choice to all, and they're up. I tell you what, if they can't get the people's choice to all, what else can they do? People in the crowd will each other. They are going Set off at a fair rate of knots as well here. 31 for the performance. Over the water. Whoa. Bit wobbly, but really fast. Here's the wedge. Here's the wedge. You're over there. Just managed to get it straight in time. Oh no! Couldn't get to the chicane! Here they come tearing down the course to try and get it back in a forward position. There we, we, can, we can go again, we're alright. No real damage done. Moving down towards the boat rattler. Over the boat rattler. I think the steering position is causing the biggest problem. Only 17 miles an hour through there, it was so much faster at the top before the crash. Kicker! Over we go! And over the finish line, let's have a look at the time. <laughs> They'll celebrate at the end. Jamie's going to enjoy himself and give out a bit more cash. 101.47. But it started off so impressively at the top. They were absolutely flying through the water, over the wedge. Everything seemed okay. And it just shows that when you just get it slightly wrong, everything can come to grief. That's where it happened, into the bales, in front of the spectators. So many people here today. Difficult to recover from. The problem he got, he came into that on a funny angle, then he's wrestling with it the rest of the way. And all of a sudden, you're going to overdo it at some stage, and then you're into the bales and you can't go anywhere else. So we are literally fresh off the run, we're bleeding on the edge. We've lost two out of our four go points somewhere down there. You just, you just got to do it, though. You've got to do it. I could feel Zach, he was, he was on the steering, and his arms just going, da, 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 da. I was like, oh, God, is that out of when we fall? It's here. Literally, my arms are aching when I was just trying to hold it. It was swapping left to right, drifting. One moment when they're in the air, and I felt like we were never going to land, mate. It went well high, and I was like, oh my god, I'm not I'm not booking it. Oh uh, yeah, we lost the ground in about a minute, 
flat and we've also lost two GoPros. Those so absolute scenes, mate. Shout out to Steve. Uh, we're in one piece. Heads a bit banged up, but apart from that, all gravy. Cool. So we had a little rumour that there was a People's Choice Awards potentially up there for grabs. So we give it to the people. We give it to Everything the people, you know. People, Everything so. for the people. I'm going to cost us fun. <laughs> And then we crashed, and I thought that was it, I thought that was a wrap, so I got out, dashed a bit of money, tried to get my kid and the fucker got off. Yeah.